Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to our Vancouver Canucks GM mode. So, in last episode, we simmed the remainder of the season, and now we are on to the playoffs up against the Calgary Flames, who finished 43-35-4, and just a bit below us in the standings. Um, I did look over their stats, but I'll show you guys quickly from the regular season. So, we were kind of two similar teams in fact, but they had a better offense than our... Um, than our offense and our defense was better than their defense so it should be an interesting series as you can see they put up three point uh or just three uh goals per game average we put in 2.76 so just a bit less uh 20 goals less told during the regular season um we had a better goals against uh we had 2.63 goals per uh, against per game uh they had 2.85 also, you could see they allowed 234 goals and we allowed in 216, so we let in like 20 less goals. So it's kind of an even series in that sense because our off or their offense could be getting shut down by our defense, and their offense could outscore our offense. So it's kind of an interesting series in that fact. And then they also had a better power play, 23.3 percent, and ours was 20.6 percent. Um, we did have a penalty, better penalty kill than them by 0.1% only, as you can see. And their home record was similar to ours, uh, but their away record is where they're not good. As you can see, they're 21 and 20, so hopefully they're not a good um, away team in the playoffs as well. And we could win our home games because since we have home ice, we should be able to take that ser the series in that sense. So let's get right on to it. So game one here in Vancouver let's see if we could take this series lead so first period and wow an offensive explosion of a first period and we're down 3-2 after the first period so uh, Vasilevsky uh, lets in two goals Hornquist and Tichuk and then Verana and Tippett come back and tie the game up on Holtstrand who's at 75 overall goalie I don't know why he's in the net um, and then uh, Michael Furland gives Calgary the lead going into the second period. So three goals on 11 shots. Vasilevsky, um, hopefully the coach decided to replace you with Thatcher Demko because that's not very good. And second period, and they have a 4-3 lead, so more offense. Uh, Cole Castles beating Tim Holtstrand and Mikhail Backlund uh, giving Calgary the lead again late in the period. So... Let's just have a strong third period and see if we could tie this game back up. And TJ Brody makes it 5-3. So Calgary's got a two-goal lead. That's not the way we want to start it off with. Come on, guys. They have a 75 overall goalie. And that he's not going to be able to stone you all the time, man. Three goals on 30 shots is not good, especially against a 75 overall. And it's 6-3 Calgary final as they get an empty netter. So not a very good defensive game there. We let their offense get her, get the best of us. As you can see, there's their three stars, none of them being our players because that was a bad first game. And we got an injury, so Kevin Fiala, oh, that's not good, is injured to May 6th. So he's out for, like, the rest of the first round and maybe potentially some second round if we don't get to the second round, or if we get to the second round. So Anthony Mantha actually is an 86 now, so we could put him there easily. Zach Sanford to the third line. And then Reed Boucher could just come in and play that fourth line. So hopefully Reed Boucher is a decent depth player and he comes up with some big goals for us. So that was not a good first game. I'm not going to change anything just yet. Just because we still have a chance to tie this series up. So game two back on home ice. Let's see if we could get a better offensive performance for us this time. And shut off out their offense with our great defense. So first period... And once again, Calgary has the lead after the first period as they're up 1-0. Second period, and we're down 2-0. What is this? We just can't seem to be able to, like, defend the Calgary Flames right now. The shots are pretty even, and now it's 3-0 Calgary. Young Breezeball gets this one right back, though. 3-1. Still doable. We could still come back from this. I might have to change the lines. Maybe it's the defense. Yeah, we're down 4-1. We've allowed in way too much goals in the first two games. We've allowed in 10 goals in two games so far, and that's probably going to be a final. Oh, we get one in the last minute, but that's not going to be enough. Chris Wyman made it 4-2, and then 
Josh Bailey makes it 5-2. So once again, we allow in like five goals, well, five or more goals in a game. So we've allowed in 11 goals in the first two games of the playoffs, and we've only scored five. So I definitely think we need to change up something with the lines because that is not really... Like, if we're a good defensive team, we should be playing better defensively than that. So, let's see what we could do. So, hmm. We'll give Reed Boucher a chance there because Zach Sanford's a power forward. He might be better on the fourth line. Um, hmm. What else could we do? Cole Castles has better faceoffs, so we're going to put him there. Wyman there. Birchie does have good faceoffs. Yes, he does. So, we'll put Birchie there. Tip it to the fourth line. Um,. Defensively, we could change some up. So we're going to put Breezebois here instead of Theodore. And yeah, that should be good, I think. Goaltending wise, since Vasilevsky has been the one in net, he's got an 850 save percentage. We're going to put Thatcher Demko in for next game. Hopefully the computer leaves him in the net. They might change, change it back to him, so I might have to go back to the deadlines again. Because we need to win both these games in Calgary or else we're, we have a chance of being eliminated in like four or five games. So uh, so did they keep Thatcher Demko in that? That's my main question. Yes, they did. Okay, good. And also, I think I'm going to make a quick little change as well down here. Mantha, 66 faceoffs. That's not good. Retain in 65. Anybody have decent faceoffs? No. Uh, let's see. We can make a weird move like that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to get Nolan Patrick on the wing because I think it's his face-offs that have screwed up that second line because he's only got 68 face-offs. So we're going to put him as a winger on the first line just to change things up a bit and hopefully, hopefully this gets us a win or at least two wins here in Calgary. So game three come on guys we need to shut them out this time and okay that's a good first period at least we didn't let them score so no goals after the first period but we're still being outshot second period and it's 1-1 okay so patrick hornquist makes it one nothing calgary but jake for gets us back in it so thatcher demko seems to be playing better in this playoff than uh vasilevsky so far so but he lets in a goal in the third period. Sam Bennett makes it 2-1 Calgary. Come on, guys. We can't get swept by the Calgary Flames after making the playoffs. Okay, there you go. Nolan Patrick on the first line comes through. And we have a tie game. Oh, my God. You got to be joking. Thatcher Demko, what are you doing? Okay, there you go. Evander Kane, big goal. Holy shit, what a weird third period. So, we tied up with seven minutes to go. But then... Mikhail Spotcheck, I think his name is, or something like that. He makes it 3-2 to two Calgary, and then like a minute and a bit later, Evander Kane manages to keep us alive. We're still being outshot heavily, but we need that overtime winner, boys. We need it. We're being outshot by like double, and there's, there it is, Jake Vertanen, and we win 4-3. to three. Thank God, Jake Vertanen. Probably not liking that I moved him in lines, but he comes through with two goals in that game, and one of them was the overtime winner, so big game and a big win. So now we are going, our role, we're still in Calgary, we have a chance to tie the series up. We need to tie the series up, because if we don't, we're still down 3-1, to one, which means we're going to need to win three in a row, which is pretty hard to do in the playoffs, so these line changes work, so hopefully... They do in this game as well. So first period and it's 1-1. One, one. So we have a we don't have a scoreless first period like last game. They open the scoring again. But Reed Boucher, who's playing depth, uh, came in and ties the game back up. So second period and we got the lead. Jakob Vrana, who we got in that Mikhail Granlund trade, has given us the lead going into the third. Can we hold on? No, we can't as Hornquist ties the game back up. Come on, guys. We need some goals here. Like, two more goals. Oh, my God. Make it, or Mark, Michael Furland. I almost said Mikhail Furland. Why do I keep saying that? Calgary has a 3-2 lead. Come on, boys. We need a third period goal. I don't want to fall down 3-1. to one. Power play. Come on, power play. It's a long one, and we aren't scoring. Oh, my God. And to Chuck gets an empty netter. And your Vancouver Canucks are down 3-1 to one in the series. I don't even want to see the stats. This is just not a good playoff run at all 
like last year we make the conference finals and this year we're just being destroyed by the Calgary Flames who had a horrible record. Um what else could I do with line changes? Hmm. You know what I'm gonna change Mantha for the first line. Uh in a Vander Kane you could go down to the second line, just change that up a bit. Cause I don't know what else to do. Hopefully it works and we could win three in a row, but it's going to be hard too because we're going to have to win at least one of those ones in Calgary. So, first period, and once again, they have the lead. God damn it, guys. Shots are 15 to 7 in favor of them, so we need to have a better second period. Second period, and it's 2 1 them. At least Ferrana gets us on the board to like pull us within one, but we need to have a strong third period this time, guys. They're all our ser series and our season is over in five games and reed boucher comes through with his second goal of the playoffs thank you reed what a great depth player to come through with two playoff goals in just a couple games and scores Tori stetcher yes okay but then they get the <laughs> the tying goal right back at least Tori stetcher got a goal that's good because Troy Stetcher and that defensive pairing has been a big minus but we're in overtime guys so we need a goal to stay alive i don't know who wants to be the hero tonight but somebody has to be on our team somebody chris wyman that would be cool somebody that we've drafted in the past come on nolan patrick future captain once horvat is retired or something oh my god you gotta be joking in the former canuck hunter Carrick has ended our season uh jim benning decides to be a douchebag and make a trade like that right before i or a couple years before I come in and be the GM of the Vancouver Canucks and that trade comes back to bite us in the ass and we lose to the Calgary Flames in only five games. Jesus. Come on, I thought that trade was those trades would have helped us out in the playoffs, but no, with the Calgary Flames with the same roster pretty much as last year and a seventy five overall goalie and only John Giles managed to beat us in five, so not a good season from our NHL club, but our AHL club is on to round number two, it looks like. Or no, this is the first round still. Okay. So our AHL club looking to get to round two. Let's see if they could get at least far. 7-1 to win and a 2-1 loss. So it's going to a game five. Come on, AHL team. I want to see you guys into the next round. And we win. So our AHL team, at least maybe they could salvage this season because... The NHL season was not that good. So game one against Providence is a loss. Okay. Game two, two and three. Let's see if we can get a lead out of it. And scouting assignment. Okay. I'll send the scout out, I guess, first. Six weeks. And we tied the series up. Good job. Kevin Fial is back. That's fine because... Oh, yeah, because of injuries, so that's fine. Um, So we have a 2-1 series lead now in the minors. Good job, boys, with a big overtime win. Let's see if we can take this series with two wins here. There's one, and that one is not one. So let's see if we can take the series today in Providence, and we are. So our AHL team is off to the conference finals, so at least our AHL team is doing good. Hopefully Alexis Gravel gets some good growth out of this playoff run. First game is a win, good job. Second game's a loss, okay. That's not bad. Win one, lose one. Can we take a lead? Yes, we can. And we have a 3 1 series lead. And our AHL team is one game away from the finals, and they go to the finals. Good job, AHL team. They're 11 and 5 in the playoffs so far. So they are definitely at least salvaging the season a bit. So at least we'll have some good growth out of these youngsters, probably. Like Bitten and Albaline and gravel and we're up against the charlotte checkers in the finals so let's do slow time simulation for the first two or well for if we have a chance to win it so 1-1 one, one in the series after the first two games come on guys we need to win some there's a loss and a win so 2-2 two, two series can we take a 3-2 series lead yes we can with a big overtime win so our ahl team has a chance to win the calder cup in utica on home ice let's so simulate this game so first period and it's 1-1 Noah Schneider who we drafted he's a bottom six guy so comes through with a tying goal second period and it's 2-2 now Albaline who's our 
good stud prospect. He's going to get us a 2-1 lead, but then Hurd ties it up for them. So, come on, guys. Let's have a good third period and win this Calder Cup. There's a goal. Backer, who was another first-round pick of ours, or second round maybe, gives us a 3-2 lead. I don't want to go right into the game so you guys could see your team. Oh, yeah, maybe I will, actually. Yeah, I think I will, so you guys could watch the last when we win the Calder Cup. If we win it, Noah Schneider, well, there's a big goal. So Noah Schneider with two goals in this game, and it looks like our AHL team is going to win their first Calder Cup. And Alexis Gravel getting it done probably in his final season in the AHL. I hope I put it at CPU versus CPU game, didn't I? If not, I'm going to have to press start and put it like that, so... No, I didn't put it. Okay, good damn. So, settings. Controller settings, was it that? No, it's not that. God damn it. Select sides, oh yes. Okay. So, there you go. And, yeah, so let's just watch, I guess, together and watch our ASL team win the Calder Cup. Hopefully, hopefully it stays like that. Hopefully, we get an empty netter. See how our youngsters are. Okay. Let's see how gravel plays. Oh my god, really? See, what? I don't know what that is. Whenever you go into like a game like this, this computer seems to score, so they get a big goal. 55.5 seconds left. Come on, guys, we need to just hold on to this. I don't care about Curtis Douglas, whoever this dude is. Come on, guys, we need an empty netter. You don't want to do this for your fan, to your fans. Okay, Nelson. Balsers, come on, go, come on, Balsers. Oh, nice pass, Nelson. Oh, big clapper, and it just misses. Oh, Joe Valeno's in Carolina. I forgot about that. He's playing for their AHL affiliate, Safin as well. Some good prospects seem like in the Carolina organization. There you go, there you go, get it out. Okay, I'll bowling, get that empty netter. Oh, I can't get it. Ooh, Alvaline, where's the number 87? That's cool. Oh, no, no. Guys, come on, get him. Oh, big save by Alexis. Come on, guys, come on. Win this face-off, win this face-off. This is a big one. And we lose the face-off. Come on, block the shot if it gets through. Oh, my God, McCowan almost ripped that. But a big save by Gravel. Oh, there you go, there you go. Yes, and our AHL team has won the Calder Cup. Woohoo, at least that's going to do something. Good job, Alexis. Good job, Alvaline. Good job, all those prospects down there in the minors. Well, at least that salvaged the season. But still sucks with our NHL team. We still need to win the Stanley Cup. That's our main focus. So, Who's our captain down there? I don't even know who our captain is. I don't think it's Elplin. And there's Alexis Gravel, I guess. Whoever number 15 is. Yeah, I don't even know who that is. But so our AHL team at least wins a cup, so there you go. Three stars, Noah Schneider, and Elplin also was one of the three stars. So big game and a big win, so... Good, we finally got an AHL trophy at least. Okay, so I'm pretty much going to end the episode right here. Just let's quickly take a look at the awards, and then that's it for the season. So, um, awards. Oh, the awards aren't settled yet. Yeah, the Stanley Cup hasn't been set yet. I wonder who's going to win the cup. Oh, it's Toronto and Arizona in the Stanley Cup Finals. Really weird. And the Arizona Coyotes have won the Stanley Cup. Wow. Interesting. So let's just check the awards and then we will end this episode. So Stanley Cup, Arizona, yeah, yeah, see like that. Sagan, Sagan, Klingberg, Sagan. <laughs> wow, it seems like Dallas had a good year. 
Bo Horvat wins again the Selkie. Good job, uh, Bo Horvat. And in our HL club, let's see if Alexis Gravel got any awards. And he's yep, he's gonna take home the best uh, player in the playoffs. Good job, Gravel. And Balsers takes home the sportsmanship, whatever award it is. So okay, not a bad year for our HL club, but a bad year for our NHL club. So. I guess, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Canucks GM Mode. So in the next episode, we'll sim up to the draft and make some trades. But thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.